Kyoto is one of the most popular tourist destinations in all of Japan. It's history, where to go, what to eat and more, right after the intro. Where is Kyoto? Kyoto lies in the Kansai region in the midwest of Japan's largest island, Honshu. It can be reached from Tokyo Station in a little more than two hours by bullet train or in about one hour and 20 minutes from the Kansai International Airport. Before we get into what to do in Kyoto, let's take a quick look at the city's history. In 710, the city of Heijo Kyo, today's Nara, became the capital of Japan, which marked the beginning of the Nara period. In 784, the capital was moved to Nagaoka Kyo, and only 10 years later, in 794, to Heian Kyo, which is today known as Kyoto. This move initiated the Heian period and Kyoto's history as the capital of Japan. Because Buddhist monks had gained too much political influence in the former capitals, Buddhist temples were originally banned from the inner city area of about 23.4 square kilometers. During the Onin War from 1467 to 1477, in which two clans fought viciously in and around the capital city, most of it was devastated. Reconstruction was not started until 1580. From this time on, the first temples inside of the city were constructed. After the shogun had resided in today's Tokyo during the Edo period, it became the official capital city of Japan in 1869, after Kyoto had this title for more than a thousand years. During the Second World War, the city was leading the atomic bomb target list, but was removed on the intervention by Secretary of War Henry L. Stimson, who had visited the city during his honeymoon and ever since fallen in love with it. Today it is the capital of Kyoto Prefecture and houses around 1.47 million people. It is a well-known tourist destination described as Japan in a nutshell. Kyoto is of tremendous cultural significance, with the largest density in shrines and temples in all of Japan, with about 400 of the former and 1600 of the latter. Some popular destinations are Kiyo Mizodera, a shrine with a 13 meter high stage. Jumping off the stage is said to grant a wish, should you survive. Of the 234 recorded jumps taken in the Edo period, a whopping 85.4% survived. Based on this practice, the expression to jump off of the stage at Kiyomizu is the Japanese equivalent to the English to take the plunge. Jumping from the stage was forbidden in 1872. King Kakuji, the temple with the golden pavilion, a three-story building whose top two floors are covered in gold leaf. I think it looks especially stunning when covered in snow. Fushimi Nari Taisha, which is famous for its hundreds of red torii gates. The trails covered in them are about 4 kilometers long, leading up the mountain. A new gate costs between about $4,000 to $10,000 to create, and each of the more than thousand of them have been donated by a Japanese business. Due to the shrine's popularity, it is estimated to have about 32,000 sub-shrines all over Japan. It is recommended to come for a visit early in the day, before the masses of tourists arrive. Nijo Castle, a flatland castle completed in 1626. It was used as the Kyoto residence of the shoguns during the Tokugawa period and will give you an impression of the simplistic lifestyle of the Japanese rulers during the feudal age. And many, many more. Some of the aforementioned are also part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Historic Monuments of Ancient Kyoto. Now that you know where to go, when is the best time to go? Kyoto can be visited at any time of the year. That being said, the summer months will be hot and humid, especially July and August. Like most parts of Japan facing the Pacific coast, typhoons can be expected in September to October. During the winter months, you will occasionally experience snowfall. The cherry blossom starts in the middle of March, bringing spring, but also lots of tourists. Different but equally beautiful are the autumn colors. The foliage season starts from around mid-October, with its peak in mid-November, finishing mid-December. Humans can't live off attractions alone. So what should you eat in Kyoto? Kaiseki Ryori is Japanese multi-course haute cuisine. Kyo Kaiseki is Kyoto's take on the matter and includes local and seasonal ingredients. Shojin Ryori is based on the diet of Buddhist monks. It stands out by being strictly vegetarian, which is still rare to find in Japan today. Kyoto's famous tofu will be used for the meals and the Arashiyama area of the city is particularly well known for them. Obanzai Ryori is Kyoto-style home cooking. Often simpler to prepare than Kaiseki Ryori, it also features seasonal ingredients and is considered to be Kyoto's sole food. As for food souvenirs, 
The Uji area in Kyoto Prefecture is famous for its fantastic green tea. Therefore, green tea and matcha and green tea products can be purchased throughout the city. For example, Kyobaum is the city's version of Baumkuchen, which of course includes matcha. Yatsuhashi is another typical souvenir made from rice flour, sugar and cinnamon. Its recipe hasn't changed since its invention in 1689. Nama Yatsuhashi or raw Yatsuhashi is sweet red bean paste wrapped in the not baked but steamed dough of Yatsuhashi. It goes especially well with, you guessed it, green tea. Ajari mochi is one of Kyoto's more representative wagashi or Japanese sweets. It consists of a rice flour and egg based dough on the outside and a red bean paste filling. According to legend, this kind of mochi was used by monks to escape starvation during particularly brutal training. And then of course, there are also limited edition Kyoto only Kit Kats. Despite its temples, shrines and food, Kyoto also offers a variety of festivals. The three most famous ones are The Gion Matsuri is a festival with more than 1000 years of tradition. Held in the Gion district every year in July, it features a variety of loads up to 25 meters in height. It is one of the most famous festivals in all of Japan. The Aoi Matsuri is said to have originated during the reign of Emperor Kimme. The purpose of this festival is to offer hollyhock or Aoi in Japanese, to the gods to prevent disasters. During the event, more than 500 people dressed in the aristocratic style of the Heian period make their way from the Kyoto Imperial Palace to the north of the city. It is held every year on the 15th of May. The Jidai Matsuri is the festival of the ages. Held on October 22nd, more than 2000 people dressed in costumes representing the different areas of Kyoto's more than 1200 years of history parade through the city. Now of course Kyoto isn't small, so you need a way to get from A to B. Unlike other cities like Tokyo, trains are not the transportation method of choice. Kyoto has a couple of trains and only two subway lines. The subways are best used for north-south and east-west connections. Most of the attractions are not easily accessible by train, but thankfully the bus network in Kyoto is very extensive. It will connect you to almost all locations inside and even outside of the city. An all-day bus pass is available for 500 yen per person. A subway and bus day pass can be purchased for 1200 yen. You can use the Suica or Pasmo prepaid cards you might have purchased in Tokyo to pay for the bus as well. Kyoto is a great place to explore by bicycle. It is mostly flat and drivers are more or less sane. You will have no issue finding a bicycle rental station close to your hotel. One thing to be careful about though is to only park your bike in the intended areas, otherwise it might be removed. I personally like getting around by bus the most, it probably has the best cost performance. If you want to take some time off of the city, you can easily explore the areas around Kyoto. Kyoto is close to the large city of Osaka, Lake Biwa and Kobe. Osaka offers nightlife, okonomiyaki and the Universal Studios Japan. Kobe is a smaller city with its most famous speciality, the arguably most famous beef in the world. Lake Biwa is one of the oldest lakes in the world and Japan's largest inland lake. What I like doing though is escape to the mountains in the north of the city. You can get there with the public buses directly from Kyoto and can check into a traditional Japanese ryokan. Enjoy the fantastic nature and relax in an onsen or hot spring bath. Now you know everything you need to know before visiting Kyoto. You're good to go now. I hope you enjoyed this video. It really took a long time to make. So I would appreciate if you could help it reach more viewers, be it by liking, commenting down below or even sharing it with your friends. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.